sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. It's Sunday, the 7th of April 2013, and we have got a packed show tonight with all kinds of technical wizardry that couldn't possibly go wrong. No, 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 no. We're working on a 50% success rate so far. <laughs> we tried it twice, it worked once, but we're going to do it again live. That'll be coming up at about 20 past the hour. I'll explain in a minute. So, also tonight we're going to be looking at the UD AGI Genesis Atomizer, which is also a dripper. It's dead clever like. Uh, we're going to be looking at that in a lot of detail, so I've actually got a couple of VTs to look at that. We're going to be looking at a couple of documents that came out of Brussels in around just over a week or so ago. They started to bubble to the surface during last week um, and see if we can figure out what on earth's going on with those. Um, and then, as I say, we've got this technical wizardry, um, which it involves tin, put it that way. So, you know, I'm sure it will go swimmingly well, pro that he is. And if it all goes wrong, it's not my fault. It's his fault. Um, but first, the titles. Excuse me. Always catches me out at the end of that. Um, now, if... Right, before we start with all the stuff I was just banging on about, I've just got to mention last night, because... Right, just looking at the number of people in chat now, and... Uh, well, it's full, so I don't really know, but there's at least 100 people watching this live. And uh, I'm guessing that a lot of people who are watching now were watching Andy Sutton's show, SOS, Smoke Today upon Saturday, yesterday. And we did a little experiment. And, um, well, this this will ring bells for some of you. Now, Twitter bomb. Right, if, if you're watching this on replay or you're watching it live tonight and you didn't see what was going on tonight, what what is a Twitter bomb? Well, it's a new thing on me. Um, but basically what it was, was, and like I said, it was a bit of an experiment. It went rather well, I think. Um, we, we had a prepared tweet, a prepared Twitter message to send to Linda McCavan, who is the rapporteur for the Envy Committee, um, uh, trying to push through this legislation, which would see uh, e-liquid over four milligrams per milliliter strength regulated as a medicine. You know this probably. Um, well, we decided, because she, she has this kind of inability to distinguish between quitting smoking and quitting, quitting nicotine, right? Um, we don't want this regulated as a medicine, so we thought we'd send her a little message, and we sent her a text asking her how she could support uh, legislation that was going to see lots of people die prematurely. Um, now, what makes it a Twitter bomb is that everybody in chat prepared the message and sent it on Andy's queue. So as soon as he said, go, Linda McCavan got a load of tweets. Probably about a hundred, we reckon, something like that. 
But that's just the beginning. <laughs> because then once they've been tweeted, oh, I've got 600 followers on Twitter and a large number of them retweeted my tweet. And if a hundred of us were retweeted 10 times, then all of a sudden you've got a thousand messages in Linda McCavan's email box. <laughs> <laughs> and of course a load more people have seen it and retweet it and on it goes and on it goes now it's very very difficult to actually know how many messages she got we used a hashtag called eu ban or one word eu ban hash eu ban and um we were searching for that but it like filters stuff out and so if some of the retweets were missing on the search thing in twitter and stuff it was very difficult for us to know but we did a quick recce earlier and a bit of a sort of that kind of maths and came up with the idea that the initial bomb probably caused close to ten thousand tweets to linda mccavin uh i dare that that's that's as big as the biggest petition and it went right to the right person so uh, she knows we're there now, guys. That was rather good. But it doesn't even end there. <laughs> it gets better because I was up all night retweeting everything with that hashtag that I could find. And, like, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I've got my iPhone uh, set up. So when I receive uh, anything's addressed to me or something of mine is retweeted, uh, it goes ding. And at, at, at four o'clock this morning, it was still going ding. Ding, ding. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, tens of thousands uh, of these tweets are now out there. And an hour before I came on air was the last time I checked Twitter. It hasn't stopped. The, uh, the original message seems to have died away a little bit now, but now people are picking things up and retweeting with that hashtag. Um, basically, if we keep going, that'll be trending soon. Uh, people are targeting celebrities and well-known people in the media. And, uh, you know, we made a noise, guys, uh, quite a loud noise. And I just want to say thanks to everybody who supported it because it was a bit of an experiment. It could have been a bit of a damp squib, uh, but we, uh, Andy stuck his neck out and, um, and it seems to have had the desired effect. So that's great. Now, um, on Tuesday in Vapor Scene, so that's on Vapor Trails TV, Tuesday in Vapor Scene, uh, Marco is going to be picking up um a follow-up action to this and set to send linda a little bonus and it'll be it, it'll basically be called uh twitter bomb retweet um so if um if you're around on tuesday evening at nine o'clock tune into vapor trials tv and marco will give you all the details and uh and we'll go from there but we also want to make this a regular feature um this looks like it could have uh, some impact so uh what what i'd like you to do is to make your way after the show of course don't, don't, don't turn me off but after the show if you could make your way to our facebook page uh facebook.com forward slash vapor trails tv and let us know via that page who you think should be the next target for a twitter bomb and when you're doing that just bear one thing in mind right it doesn't have to be a negative tweet there are a lot of high profile supporters and MEPs out there a Twitter bomb could be used just as effectively to highlight the people that are supporting us so it doesn't have to be a we don't like you we don't like what you stand for tweet okay um, so tell us on the Facebook page tell us who you think should be the next Twitter bomb target and what message you'd like to send them whether it be a positive or a negative message Obviously, it needs to be clean, and we don't want to get sued. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it looks like it could be a useful tool, this. So uh, kudos to Andy for coming up with the whole thing. Um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It was, it was well orchestrated because we were doing it by the skin of our teeth. We had uh, Sav and Daz and everybody running around in the background trying to get the tweet message to people, cutting and pasting it everywhere, and it was confused. And <laughs> there was a grammatical error in the first version. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were changing it at the last minute and everything so so to, to get such an impact from something that we were really sort of figuring out as we went along i think andy and the guys did a brilliant job so well done to them and well done to you cracking stuff right uh now we'll get into uh into tonight's content 
I'll just play a quick sting. Right, so now I'm going to talk about uh, this thing, which is the AGI from UD. And um, at the moment, it's in dripping mode. Um, now, the story behind this is uh, Darren, uh, sort of a uh, friend of the show, <laughs> Darren Burns, uh, who runs safersigs.co.uk, sent a few of these out to people to be tested. Um, this is my feedback. I've had to split this into two parts. It's quite lengthy um, because it is a fully functional Genesis atomizer and it's a fully functional dripping atomizer, rebuildable, obviously. Um, so the first part that's coming up is all about the Genesis. I hope you find this good. Thursday morning, the 4th of April 2013, and I've just had a delivery. Uh, addressed to the Happy Happy Vapor. <laughs> ah, that sounds like a song, doesn't it? I know what it is, uh, because I've been getting text messages for the last couple of days telling me when it's going to be delivered. Um, and this is, I have to say, a great service. I mean, look at that. I'm not sure if that'll focus. But basically, I got a text telling me your Safer Six Limited parcel is due for delivery by Dave, your Interlink driver, between five past eleven and five past twelve. Perfect. I knew within an hour when it was coming. It was actually about a quarter past eleven when it arrived. Now I know what's in here before I open it because it's the AGI uh, from Safer Six, uh, because Daz at Safer Six was looking for people to test them, get a bit of feedback before he puts them on sale. So uh, right now, I probably want to quite a few people who are trying these. That did it. Some Safer Six cards, uh, a leaflet about the EU threat, uh, which I saw Daz mentioning on UK Vapors a couple of weeks back. And in here, the AGI. So you get a little bag with some silica wick and some mesh and a little allen key and a bunch of o-rings and there's a little bit of wire in there as well and then the AGI itself. Now this is basically designed to be a Genesis style atomizer or it looks like you can use a silica wick as well that can be used either as a tank or as a dripper so there's clearly some way of getting this glass off so you can just drop it down and use it as a dripper of that sort of dimension um, I'll have a play with it and then we'll come back and see what I can figure out. Well, that didn't take too much figuring out at all, actually. Uh, remove the top cap. Um, first observations are, I like the idea that the top cap isn't a screw thread because it makes it easy to line up the air hole in the top cap with your wick. Um, if you unscrew the, sort, the head where you do all your coil attachment and stuff, you can remove the glass tank. And that bit you can just set to one side. Um, now, that's the bottom of the Genesis tank with its 510 thread. This is also a 510 thread. So that will go straight onto a 510 mod. So if we wick that with the silica wick, stick the top cap on, that's your drip mode to convert that back into a Genesis we simply put the tank on do it the right way around of course stick the tank back on that base and screw the top on the head screws the 510 thread that was in the mod when it was in drip mode is going into that central column 
probably don't want to over tighten that. It does feel like glass to me rather than plastic. I'll try to treat it with a little bit of respect. There you go. So what we need to do is uh, is try it, and I'll try it in both configurations. Uh, I'll try it with the Genesis setup, and I'll try it with the silica dripping setup, and give it a go. Okay, so the first thing I've done is strip the whole thing down uh, into as many parts as I possibly could <laughs> uh, to give it a good clean. Um, there are some reports of bits of metal, you know, like swarf and stuff like that, interfering and causing shorts with some of these Chinese atomizers. Um, and, you know, I think just, just a good uh, sensible move anyway. Uh, it, there was a little bit of dust or something inside the top cap, for example. Could have been like metal filings, I don't know. Uh, but I washed it all out and given it a good dry and then furthermore giving it a little time to stand on some tissue paper to make sure it's dry. Uh, so I'm going to do the Genesis setup first because uh, that's what interests me most. So um, putting this together properly for the first time I think that bit goes on there. Certainly seems to fit. And the glass and then the head screw that together reasonably tightly give us a little scope for le leaking as we can and then I've got to put all these little screws back in and they are quite fiddly <laughs> There is, uh, in the little packet of bits that came with it, there is a replacement terminal screw, one of the really tiny ones, and a replacement grub screw for the wick holes included. So that's it put back together, and we're ready to have a go. So, I'm going to use my little Cyan Mods base. And I'm going to make a Genesis wick and coil. Looks to be about right. Let's oxidise it. One point eight ohms seems reasonable. Right, I've decided to stick it on the GP Paps uh, eighteen six fifty with uh, a Cherry Vapes Ming drip tip, still one on the top. I think that looks pretty cool actually, that looks really good. Um, but of course, that's only part of the story. What does it vape like? In order to get the answer to that question, I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use it for the rest of today. Uh, then uh, I'll let you know what I thought of it.
for the moment is working very nicely indeed as you can see um, but uh, I'll have a day with it in Genesis mode and then we'll try it in dripper mode well it's now Friday late morning actually it's early afternoon uh, so I've been using the uh, AGI in Genesis mode for just over 24 hours so I've got a pretty good uh, idea of how it works and my my overwhelming assessment of it is it's a really good Genesis atomizer uh, in terms of the, the, the flavor and the performance the flavors perhaps not quite as good as the Fogatti but then again this is quite a big sort of chamber compared to the Fogatti and what have you but it's still excellent I mean really excellent um, I'm getting a lovely throw tip from the same juices I use in everything so it's easy for me to compare those kind of things um, it really is a very pleasant vape and it looks great I mean okay this is quite an expensive mod that it's on um, but it looks every bit as good from a sort of short distance as an expensive Genesis atomizer so it looks the part it performs really well I've had no problems with anything like leaks um, since I recorded the footage yesterday that you've just seen I've learned that it's actually a Pyrex tank because uh, I, I thought it was glass as opposed to plastic turns out it's Pyrex um, it is stainless steel construction um, it's a really good Genesis atomizer um, but as I said before that's only half of the story with the AGI because it's also a dripper so uh, join me in part two of this little review test whatever you want to call it in part two I'm going to be setting this thing up in dripper mode and see how that works because I've heard that they're a little bit leaky let's find out So that's the first part, that was the uh, AGI in Genesis mode and it was pretty damn good I have to say. <clears throat> We're going to take a short break now and uh, after that break hopefully we'll have Tim and, uh, and vaporised from the uh, South Coast Vapors Mini Meat. It might happen, see you in a minute. And welcome back. Now, just uh, over my left shoulder here, you may be able to see Tim. But if I press this button, you'll be able to see it's definitely Tim. And Tim, tell us where you are, mate. Um, I'm down at the Anglesey Arms, uh, just outside of Chichester. And what's the place called? Hal Necker. Hal Necker. Hal Necker. Sounds yep. excellent. <laughs> it, sound, it, sound, it sounds good. <laughs> and the beer's exceptional. Well, that's good. That's good. The beer's not bad here as normal. <laughs> good, uh, good. 
But uh, uh, okay, and, and this is the South Coast Vapors Mini Meat. It, well, it, it was indeed, and it is indeed, should I shut the say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, um, it had been going since probably around 2.30 this afternoon. Um, when we arrived, there was uh, tables full of uh, the usual paraphernalia, people uh, rewinding coils, which was very helpful because I blew this one up on the way here, and uh, a guy re recorded it for me, and uh, that's working well now. And uh, there's been juice swapping going on, story swapping going on, uh, a collection of retailers hanging around the place. Uh, it's, it's it's been a good afternoon, a proper vape meet, mate. A excellent, vape. excellent. And so I can hear there's people in the background there. There is. Yay! Any, any of them brave enough to stick their face on live Vapor Trails TV? Mr. V. <laughs> oh, Hello, I know everyone. you. You're you're Mr. V. I am indeed. Yes, Dave. So uh, Hello, so you are, you are, sorry after you carry on. No, no, no. Hello, everyone in Vapor World. I must thank uh, the Southampton crew for coming along uh, and also the Bogner crew um, and the guys from Brighton as well. They were really good. Uh, and also Hampshire. And also, mustn't forget Chopper, who uh, allowed us to come and vape in the pub, in the pub. which was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, never forget Chopper. That's my advice. <laughs> 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 no, it has been really good. Um, there's been juice swaps, um, people learning stuff. It's been, it's, it's just been a fantastic meet. Fantastic. I'm, I'm really glad it went well for you because you I know you put a lot of thought and consideration into it. Uh, I, I have to pay you a compliment anyway. Cat told me that I am to tell you that uh, you did a fantastic job on that trailer for it, by the way. Oh, thank you very much, Cat. So uh, she, uh, to quote Cat, she said, "Say a well done from me then." So there you go, oh. well done from Cat. Well, and me. Thank you very much, Kat. <laughs> so, so the, the order of the day then, I, I, I must admit, I always giggle a bit when people say, well, we've been swapping juices all day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that could definitely be taken out of context. A few invented as well. Yes. Right? Say that again, Tim. A few new ones have been invented today. Right. Black currant and licorice has been uh, pretty flavour of, yeah, mm. of the day. That yeah. sounds adorable. That does. It is. It's it nice. is. Yeah. It just needs a bit of Diablo Loco in it, uh, which well, is. I've got some of that. <laughs> that's the staple juice that. of vape meats, isn't it? Diablo yeah. Loco. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so um, I suppose uh, you know you haven't finished this one yet, but you're going to be organising another one in the near future. Well, I do hope so. Chopper has said that, you know, he's he's got a massive garden here and he's hoping that, uh, you know, maybe put on a sort of South Coast vape meat. That sounds like a good idea. With camping. Yeah. With camping. Oh, yes, this... And live bands. Yeah, camping, live bands and real ale. Blimey. Vape stock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, is. it is. That happened down there somewhere, didn't it? <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, you, you know, I love to get to vape meets and I just couldn't get down to this one, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, um, I'm definitely going to uh, try and get to the next one. Um, right. We've got to move along here. But I, would, I just want to say a huge thanks to Tim for lugging his uh, computer all the way yeah. out on, on, on a day off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've got to thank Tim for doing that. And uh, I wish you all well. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening and um, see you again soon. Bye. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> now, if if of course uh, you uh, vape meets are brilliant, right? Vape meets are ace. Uh, you you learn stuff. And just meeting people, it's just brilliant. I've never been to a vape meet and wished I'd, and you know, come away thinking uh, I'd, I'd wished I'd stayed at home. They're always good fun. And um, if you've got a vape meet coming up, um, if you want a bit of help publicising it, let me know and I'll include you in this.
And yes, somebody in chat just noticed that at the same time that I did, and I cut and pasted that into that thing earlier. But it's the Dorset Vapors meeting in Hampshire. <laughs> hey, I was just following orders, okay? <laughs> but yes, very well observed. Um, yes, I'll clarify that one, but I promise. Trip Hammer sent me a PM with all the details in, and I cut and pasted it. I hope I haven't screwed it up. If I did, but it's next week anyway. It's next Saturday. <laughs> um, right, the next thing that I want to do tonight uh, is to just very quickly, really, uh, have a look at a couple of documents that appeared um, during the last week and a bit, basically. Uh, you might recall uh, on Dave's Tackle Box last week, we were talking about uh, the Tobacco Products Directive and uh, so some proposals that, that appeared. Uh, it was a draft opinion document from the IMCO committee. Um, well, I'm starting to actually familiarise myself with how these things work now. Um, I've got here a document and I'll get it up on screen and uh, hopefully that screen saver won't keep kicking in too quickly. Um, this is another one that looks very like that draft opinion document in terms of the way it's formatted, but this one is actually uh, Linda McCavan's report. Again, it's a draft, uh, but it's available for download, so it's not that much of a draft. Um, so, so this this really this document really reflects Linda McCavan's current state of thinking on what the legislation should look like and what they're going to take forward to the EU Parliament to vote on. Okay, so th this is a document that that covers a few amendments where people have said oh there's a typing error in there they've corrected it in this document when people have said that's wrong it should read like this they've done that so they've taken on board some feedback um, but pretty much if you go through the document and, and, and I'll do what I did last week and just sort of scroll through it a bit um, and you can see that very quickly that pretty much all of the amendments they're proposing uh, are related to tobacco yeah things that are you know, unquestionably tobacco products so there's no actual specific amendments or references to nicotine containing products and indeed if you go to the very end of the document Um, you really have to go to the last but one chapter, um, which basically repeats the uh, position that we were in when all these discussions started. Now, in some ways it's good. There just doesn't seem to be any sort of stomach uh, as far as envy are concerned to follow the IMCO lead and try and include all e-cigs or anything like that and um, there's certainly nothing in there that's harsher than the original proposal that we saw pop up in December um, but that's about the only good news I could find in that um, what what I read this as uh, a reaffirmation that they intend to medicalize everything over four milligrams per milliliter um, there's also, like I say, there were a lot of changes and amendments in there relating to tobacco, like cigarettes, and they've even um, they've even started including the shisha tobacco, or what they call water boiled tobacco, or something. Um, and they're very specific about snus in there, but there's no mention of e-cigarettes specifically. That's as you were. Um, but there are enough changes in there. To make me realise we definitely do not want e-cigarettes regulate, regulated as a tobacco product. Because there's new legislation on cross-border sales, internet sales, um, packaging requirements. Uh, we really don't want it to go that way. Um, so I, 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 it doesn't really change much, that document, for me, uh, beyond... Uh, making the point that the Twitter bomb that we did last night was well justified. Um, if she's not going to listen, then we'll just say it louder and louder until they start to listen. So keep the pressure up, guys. Now, I want to give a bit of balance, though. There was another document that appeared. 
uh, during the week as well. Now, this document is a library briefing document. And uh, what this appears to be, and I did a little bit of checking, but what this appears to be is a, a briefing document for MEPs. OK, so you've got to imagine you've got however many hundred or thousands of MEPs there are. Then they've all got to vote on whether this tobacco products directive goes through and gets passed as law eventually. And most of them don't know their arse from their elbow, let alone what an electronic cigarette is. So this document has been prepared by some libri librarian researcher somewhere uh, as a briefing document. Now, don't worry, I'm, I'm not going to go through this whole document. It's quite lengthy. Um, but I'll put links to both these documents in the show page uh, for this show. I'll put them in the YouTube description. Um, and, you know, and if you, if you can't find them anywhere else, just, just ping me uh, and I'll get you the links if you want to look through it in, in any detail. This document is actually really quite a balanced document because it starts talking about things like, I mean, the very opening paragraph summary um, Let's get it on screen so you can see it. Uh, electronic cigarettes, e-cigarettes, work by vaporizing nicotine liquid. They are aimed at people who do not want to smoke tobacco, but cannot or do not want to overcome their nicotine addiction. Now, I know this is only a briefing document, and it hasn't been put together by any of the rabid ants that are trying to get the TPD through, but it's got the EU logo on it, and that's the first time I've seen any recognition of do not want to overcome their nicotine addiction. It's the first time that I've seen e-cigarettes described as anything other than a quick device. Um, there was a little bit in the Linda McCavan document, uh, I won't flick back to it now, but where she said that maybe some vapors were using them as a way of getting around the smoking laws. Um, you know, the smoking ban, so they can use them in areas where you can't smoke and stuff like that. Um, but there, there, there was no sort of concept of people wanting to consume nicotine and using electronic cigarettes to do it. No concept of recreational nicotine use. And there's that dog again, the one that you heard during the VT. But um, so, so, you know, it's nice to see that somebody in Brussels uh, has done that and also that they've, they've put it into the briefing document. Now, whether the MEPs that don't have an opinion yet read this, and accept that at face value or not, we just don't know. But at least it's there. Um, there's also reference in this document to the term uh, vapors. Let me just get that up on screen. You can see sort of uh, bottom right hand side of the screen. Uh, they've, they've done a little glossary. They're talking about denormalization. Harm reduction, there's another term that we just haven't heard mentioned that should have been mentioned loads of times. And vapor. Consumers of electronic cigarettes refer to themselves as vapors and not as smokers because they inhale vapor, not tobacco smoke. Um, I really wish I was reading that in these draft opinion documents and draft reports, you know, where, you know, because th this is just done by somebody who's actually done a decent research job. Uh, it's not, unfortunately, not being written by a politician, but um, I take some heart from it. You know, I take some heart. There, there's lots of good stuff in this document. There's some stuff you won't agree with, and there's some stuff that you do agree with, and that's why I say that it's a balanced document, and that's such a rare treat from Brussels that I thought it was worthy of a mention. Um, I can say I'll put the links uh, in the show page for this show. I'll put them in the YouTube description uh, so you can get hold of them and have a look in your own time if you want. They're worth a look. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they do open your eyes a little bit to what's going on. Uh, just the contrast between an independently researched uh, reference document and what Linda McCavan is saying in her report. The, the discrepancy between the two is precisely why this whole process is so frustrating for those of us who... Uh, quote, if I can get there again, for those of us who do not want to overcome their nicotine addiction. Time for another break. See you in a minute. I 
Weber and I Weber Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-Alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. Welcome back. Right, okay, so we're into uh, the final part of tonight's show, and next up is the dripper section of the UD AGI review test, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm using it now, so it can't be that bad. That's a clue. Partly that, and partly because I couldn't be asked to set up the Genesis before the show because I didn't have much time. Um, but let me play you the second part uh, of that VT. Uh, this is all about the dripper functionality of the AGI. And I'll see you after this. Hi, I'm Dave, and welcome to part two of my little look at the UD AGI atomizer. Now in part one we had a look at the AGI uh, being used as a Genesis tank atomizer so looking a bit like that but of course it can also be used as a dripper. Uh, so what I'm going to do in the, the second part of this little review is, um, is set it up as a dripper and see how it performs. Before we do that though uh, I have seen comments on forums um, including from uh, Darren at Safer Six, who sent me this to uh, to put through its paces, um, that it can be a little bit leaky in dripper mode. So before we set it up and start using it, we're going to do a little experiment just to see what we're up against. First thing I need to do then to get this into dripper mode is just remove the top cap, and then you unscrew the top. and discard the rest. Because we're going to be using it in dripper mode we need to make sure that all the wick holes and stuff are plugged by replacing the little grub screws. So I'm just using the allen key to put these grub screws in. I'm going to screw them down so they're just flush with the level of the base. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make sure that the uh, little terminal screw here that served as the negative terminal for the Genesis setup is screwed down all the way as well. Let's face it, the leak is going to happen where those grub screws are, I reckon. But let's find out. So I have this piece of tissue paper, and onto that I have put the dripping atomizer head. And in this syringe, I've got some plain PG. Uh, it's not got any nicotine in it or anything like that, it's just PG. And I'm going to fill up the base like that. And now I'm going to let it stand. And I'm going to come back in half an hour or so and see if anything has leaked through. Okay, the moment of truth. Um, there's nothing on this paper towel. That's bone dry. I'll just get rid of the PG that's built up in there, but uh, it would appear that this particular AGI doesn't suffer from the same problems as some of the others. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at the bottom, there's nothing seep through there at all. This is good. So let's get it wicked. Right, slight change of plan. 
uh, it's actually Saturday afternoon now. <laughs> uh, something came up, so I, this thing's been sat there all day yesterday and today without me using it. Um, but I'm now going to try and get uh, the dripping set up. Set up. So first thing I'm going to do is cut myself off a length of this three mil wick that I've got. might be a bit too long but we'll see and I've got a length of canthal here the 0.2 canthal that I tend to use on all my rebuildables now it should be pointed out that despite what Dave Dawn said on the haze hour last Thursday about me knowing what I'm doing with coiling slicker wicks it's just not true I've done a few but I've never done a dripping atomizer before, so uh, pretty much anything could happen here. But there's a coil. I'm not sure if it's any good. But that's got five complete turns on it. And looking at this, you've got like a little hole in the negative post here to thread the wire through and the top one is the one that I used when we did the Genesis setup which is just basically a clamp terminal so, um, so let's slacken those off a bit and see if we can thread this Looks like I've got the two sort of tails about the right distance apart. That's always a good start. Cool, that's fiddly. Okay, but we're in. We're in. I'll tighten that one up. Oh, I snapped the wire. It's possible to over tighten this and snap the wire. Not good. Start again. So here we go with attempt number two. Right, well I've made something like a coil anyway. It's not that neat actually. I'm just going to use a pin just to try and make that a little bit more evenly spaced that doesn't look too bad I have no clue what the resistance on this thing is going to be when I try it but first thing we'll do is just try and pulse it a little bit and see if it works at all as you can see something's happening there Seems to be working, and I'm gonna, because I don't really know what I'm doing, <laughs> I'm just gonna try and make this coil fit around in the bottom of the thing as much as I can, because that seems logical. Just to quickly test the resistance on it. So I'm gonna stick it onto the EVIC, as that's the easiest way that I've got to hand. And that's saying 2.5 ohms. Yeah, okay, so that's probably a little bit high. But that's okay. If I use it on this, it'll sort that out for me. And we're only just sort of giving it a rough test anyway, aren't we? So uh, let's get some juice on there. I think this is Vermilion River. Kentucky Vanilla Wind. So let's chuck a bit of that on there and see how... How it's going to work. Tuck that bit of wick 
back in. And then I'm just going to stick the top cap with the drip tip, just the way it was in the Genesis setup on the top. So as I say, um, it's currently half past five on Saturday afternoon. Uh, tomorrow morning, I shall uh, film an update and see how well it's performing. I mean, that was easy to wick. I've never done it before, and I've come up with something that works. Probably could have been a bit neater, in truth. But as you can see, it's vaping rather nicely. It's a two and a half ohm coil. Probably should be a bit lower, I guess. And I'm vaping it at eight watts, so yeah, the Evix having to give me four and a half volts near as damn it. It's producing very, very well. I'm getting more vapor from this from what I thought was a really nice Genesis setup on it the other day, so. Um, it's not going to be a chore to endure this for the next 24 hours, I don't think. So I'll use it, I'll come back, I'll let you know how I get on with it, including whether it leaks. Right, well it is now Sunday morning, just about. And I was up very late last night, so 4am, so this has had a good 12 hours of use. And um, I have to say, I've been really pleased with it. Um, I haven't actually detached this atomizer from this device. Since you saw me put it on uh, yesterday. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew it now. And see if it's leaked at all. And the answer is not one bit. There's not a stray drop of juice there at all. Um, the way I've been using it, I'm not used to using drippers. I think what you're supposed to do is remove the drip tip and drip through the middle. That's the way you used to drip with atomizers anyway, in the good old days. But uh, actually all I've been doing is removing the top cap to expose the coil. Because you might as well remove the whole top cap as the drip tip. And then just coat the wick with a little bit more for good measure so that's the way I've been topping it up so just been making sure the the wick is uh, nicely covered in juice then you simply I've been popping the top cap back on with the air hole lining up with the wick so so that's as close to the wick as I can get it and then it just works As you can see it produces really well as I was saying yesterday um, it's a very pleasant vape um, so to wrap up then um, there were the people who were doing this sort of pre-release test for safer cigs um, a few people said they'd had problems with leaks I've not had any um, but this is a pre-release version there will be tweaks to sort that out before they go on sale I'm told um, but mine hasn't leaked anyway as you've seen um, it works really well in dripper mode it works really well in Genesis mode I've no idea what the price of these is going to be but let's be honest it's UD so it's not going to be astronomical by any stretch of the imagination uh, I think what you've got here is a damn good atomizer it's stainless steel the uh, glass tank for the Genesis setup is is Pyrex um, it's a good quality atomizer. The threads on the fittings inside are, they seem pretty good to me. Uh, got no problems. The top cap, even though it's held by O-rings, can quite easily support the weight of an EVIC. Um, it's good and tight. Um, it's a resounding a thumbs up from me on this. Um, I can see this being a very popular atomizer. Um, so I hope that's given you a good overview of the AGI. Uh, we will say thanks to Darren at Safer6 for including me in his sort of pre-release test. And um, I'll be back. Until then, thanks for watching.
Right, so if Dazzy's watching from Sofa 6, thanks for sending that along. Uh, that's that's probably one of the best pieces of kit I've got my hands on for some time, actually. Uh, I've no idea what the pricing on this is going to be yet, uh, but I'm assuming you're not going to sort of... Uh, need to break the bank to get hold of one of these with it being Chinese produced um, I, in use it performs every bit as well as the other Genesis atomizers I've got I did say there's a slight qualification with the uh, Fugatti has got a much smaller chamber on it and that, that seems to improve the flavor a bit um, but the flavor on the the uh, AGI is by no means bad it's it's it, it to be honest with you it's performing every bit as well as the Orion 2.1. Um, I, I, I genuinely mean that. Uh, very, very, very nice little atomizer. So uh, uh, good luck with that one, Daz. Uh, I will put those two videos up on YouTube and stick them on the thread on UK Vapors where the reviews are supposed to go. <laughs> I promise. Um, now, just very quickly now um before i start to wrap up and i don't often do this because it doesn't make sense for people watching the replay but i'm going to do a shout out even though he probably can't hear me anyway because i think he just posted that he still can't watch it live but a uh, former presenter and really good friend of mine joe aka jezrel uh he's in chat tonight i haven't seen him for months so jez welcome back mate um not sure if you're going to hear this but uh, it's great to see you and sorry to hear you that you're still having problems with the internet chickens um but it's great to see you around again mate now um it's time to start wrapping up so um i just i just want to leave leave with one thought and that's the twitter bomb thing okay let me get the little thing on here this is our facebook page um, if you get on there, let us know who's going to be the target for the next Twitter bomb, right? Remember, it doesn't have to be a hot, it doesn't have to be a sort of a, a dig at anybody. Um, lots of candidates. Uh, I'll give you a few suggestions. There are a number of doctors and leading MEPs and stuff who've spoken in our favour. We could big them up. Uh, equally, we could go for that guy who wrote the piece in The Guardian last week and, uh, you know, uh, maybe tweet him a link to something that puts some of these uh, some of these wrongs to rights i don't know uh, i'm looking sort of anxiously at the skype chat there to see what count i've got left <laughs> but the the twitter bomb thing i think we, we can develop this and if we use it right we can we, we can use it to some effect in the meantime keep petitioning your meps um uh, the the the, uh, the attitude that I'm taking to MEPs is if they started to repeat themselves to me and they're not agreeing with me, then I'm trying to continue to persuade them. I want them to realise that I'm not going to go away, frankly. Um, I can see uh, typing into the uh, into Skype there. Got a few seconds left. Uh, I will put the links to those two documents that I had to skim through quite quick. Um, uh, but what I do want to say is well done to Andy, well done to Daz and Sav behind the scenes last night for, for, for setting that Twitter bum up. Uh, thanks to uh, Kat for helping me run this show tonight. And she's counting me down now as we speak. Um, get along to the Facebook page. Like it while you're there, of course. Let us know what you want to do with the Twitter bomb and uh, let's see if we can't make some more noise next time. Nine o'clock Tuesday, Marco will be uh, doing the retweet campaign. Um, I'll be watching that. But until then, until next week, I'm out of here. And I still can't find my end credits. They keep moving. Good night, everybody, and thanks for watching.